Last week, SpaceX made headlines with an incredible Starship first orbital flight. However, the upcoming months will be a challenging period for the company as they work to assess the damage sustained by the launch pad during liftoff and develop solutions to prevent further damage. One of the primary solutions revealed by Elon Musk is a water-cooled metal plate that can withstand the immense power of the Raptor 2 engines. The company is actively working on implementing this solution to ensure the success of future launches. So, how effective is a water-cooled steel plate when it comes to dealing with the strength and sound waves produced by 33 Raptor engines during launch? Can this actually be the best solution for Starbase, especially where the launch pad is concerned? Find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. To reminisce, SpaceX's gigantic Starship vehicle lifted off Thursday, April 20th from the company's Starbase facility in South Texas on its first ever fully stacked test flight. The rocket-spacecraft combo performed relatively well on its debut test flight, reaching a maximum altitude of 39 kilometers before several issues forced SpaceX to order the vehicle's destruction high over the Gulf of Mexico. But the picture at ground level was a bit grimmer. When the dust cleared at Starbase after the liftoff, a scene of wreckage emerged. As SpaceX's Starship rocket took flight, more than two dozen powerful rocket engines fired at once, pushing the enormous vehicle into space and blasting away at the launch gantry and the ground below it with more than 6,000 metric tons of force. All that energy led ultra-strong concrete at the base of the launch structure to dissolve, hurling chunks of rubble into the ocean and pelting the site where journalists set up remote cameras to capture the event, even punching through a car parked there. The dust thrown up by the rocket's engines was more broadly felt by a thick layer of sand descending on the surrounding communities, notably the nearby city of Port Isabel. And there is an obvious reason why so much debris was thrown up and the launch pad was so damaged. SpaceX didn't build a flame diversion system, or pump in water, to absorb heat and sound energy. Typically, rocket launch sites have large concrete trenches and redirect energy away from the pad and the vehicle, while thousands of gallons of water deluge the area. Here's a picture of the space shuttle sitting above its flame trench back in 2009. It's not clear why SpaceX didn't use this kind of infrastructure, which is part of the launch setup for its Falcon rockets. One theory, advanced by Eric Roche, an expert in environmental impact analyses, is that obtaining approval to build it from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers would require months or years that SpaceX didn't want to spend. SpaceX's application for such a permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was withdrawn in 2022 after it declined to consider alternate sites for Starship like its launch facilities at Cape Canaveral. In addition, constructing a flame diverter and flame trench features is not a straightforward process. The water table in the area plays a significant role in determining the depth to which the features can be dug. In the case of SpaceX's launch site, the water table is too close to the surface, making it difficult to excavate deep enough to install a flame diverter and flame trench. As a result, SpaceX must explore alternative solutions. Building up large structures above ground would require rebuilding the launch tower and other systems. The built-up structure for the space shuttle was huge. And honestly, SpaceX considered digging a flame trench at Starbase, which is located next to Boca Chica Beach, but ultimately decided not to. Aspiring to have no flame diverter in Boca, but this could turn out to be a mistake. Company founder and CEO Elon Musk said via Twitter back in October of 2020. This isn't to imply that Musk is now second-guessing that decision, however. Indeed, he seems to think that the company still has a way forward at Starbase that doesn't involve a flame trench. Instead, Elon said on Twitter that the company had begun building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount three months ago. However, Musk said the plate wasn't ready in time and engineers went ahead with the launch, thinking that the high-strength concrete below the rocket would withstand the force. That analysis was apparently based on a test when the rocket was fired at half its thrust capacity. Launch and landing pads are touchy. Any little thing that goes wrong can cause a zipper effect that creates a giant problem. Phil Metzger, 
a sophisticated researcher at the University of Central Florida that has truly researched the bottom outcomes of rocket launches and, in addition, touchdowns, said on Twitter. That's because you're trying to safely dispose of enough super high energy gas to shoot a rocket into the sky. However, Dr. Phil Metzger is confident that the water-cooled steel plate proposed by SpaceX will effectively prevent the steel from melting due to the heat produced during the launch. Phil Metzger based this on his team's previous use of steel plates for some of the Morpheus launch locations. Their analysis showed that the heat would redistribute quickly enough that it wouldn't cause the surface to melt and that the steel plate was large enough to handle the heat. To be safe, they also applied paint on ablative on top of the steel plate which erodes under the heat and helps to keep what's beneath it cooler. The idea of a water-cooled steel plate is great, as the water will remove heat from the steel in real time, preventing it from melting. However, the flat plate will not mitigate launch acoustics. The shock wave caused by engine ignition creates a big buildup of pressure that reflects off the pad and travels up the sides of the rocket, causing it to vibrate. This shock wave is slowly pushed down the nozzle, then reflects back up, causing stress on the rocket's structure. The acoustic noise from the rocket exhaust also vibrates the rocket due to turbulence. While there are no great models of acoustic noise production in rocket plumes, it's important to keep researching rocket plume acoustics to make rockets more efficient. Designing launch pads to reduce acoustics is also important to save more payload margin. Dr. Metzger has no idea about the acoustic effects of Starship or its structural stability, but it's easy to design systems that reduce launch acoustics and give more margin back to the vehicle. Therefore, if SpaceX decided to do so, it could be done. The Federal Aviation Administration, which regulates launch site safety and oversees technical investigations into commercial rocket mishaps, will need to sign off on changes to Starship's launch pad infrastructure before its next launch attempt, said Tom Murata, who advises other space companies on launch regulations. The bigger challenge for SpaceX is FAA evaluating its steel plate solution and deciding that it meets the regulations in a timely manner, he said. We should know soon enough if the new steel plate will provide adequate protection to the orbital launch mount going forward. In that Friday tweet, Musk said that SpaceX should be ready to try another Starship launch in one to two months. For now, SpaceX is keeping its head down, trying to solve its problems, make its repairs, and satisfy the FAA, which holds the ultimate leash on future Starship flights. There are many who continue to believe the company has the wherewithal to do that, and that Starship has a bright future. This was a test flight, says astrophysicist Pascal Ehrenfreund, a professor at the George Washington University Space Policy Institute. During the development of a disruptive launcher, setbacks are anticipated. The investigations will reveal when a next test flight will be possible. There will certainly be a next test flight, and hopefully Starship becomes a commercial reality. And with that, today's episode has come to its conclusion. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell so you won't miss out on new episodes from Alpha Tech. Also, don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos like this. And for that, once again, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.